word of God is serious. Can you say amen? You don't play with it. You don't mock it. You don't reject it. You don't manipulate it. You obey it. Welcome to the program, Warning. I'm Dr. Hansen, founder and president of World Ministries International. If you have your Bibles, turn with me, please, to the book of Zechariah. I want to read you out of Zechariah chapter 14. We're going to read verses 1 through 4. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I'll gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is therefore Jerusalem, on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall be removed toward the north and half of it toward the south. Trouble is coming, not only around the world, but severe problems are coming to the nation of Israel. Severe problems are coming as war like never before. It says all nations shall gather against Jerusalem to battle against the city, and it shall be taken and the houses rifled and the women ravished. I have with me today in the studio a born and raised Israeli. His name is Doran Ketar. He's the founder and president of Shield of David. He's working on Project Gideon. He's actually uh, still a member of the Israeli Defense uh, Reservist. He's an executive assistant uh, to the Watchman International. Now, he's been on this program before, and last time he was here, his wife couldn't get pregnant. In fact, uh, 10 years and no baby, and they tried everything. And I remember he stayed with me in my house. I said, uh, let me pray for you, and, and your wife will be pregnant. I did. She has delivered now uh, a baby, four-month-old baby girl. And uh, I'll let you... Uh, talk to him as far as he'll give you an explanation right now. So, uh, Doran, welcome back to the program warning. Thank you. Appreciate and it. I want you to talk to them. I want you to tell, uh, in fact, you can look right into this camera and tell them uh, what you have now. Well, quite frankly, um, as Dr. Hansen was saying, I've been working for the Watchman International for about 13 years now, uh, assisting Lars Anderson in ministry throughout, uh, really throughout the whole world, just seeing um, what God is doing worldwide. And right now, uh, God has us in Sweden, in the nation of Sweden, um, in a very strategic time because um, there is an apostasy going on right now in the world, and we're seeing this. This is not just in Sweden. This is worldwide an apostasy that is trying to uh, lead God's people back to the dark ages, back to what all the, the, the reformers and, and all the, the, the different men of God that God used throughout history to bring us back to this time that we are in right now. And um, so we're seeing an apostasy t taking place. We're seeing some, some of the, the greatest men uh, in Sweden that have been mightily used by God uh, really just go back to the, the old ways, going back to, uh, uh, away from what God is doing. Now, Doran, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start to get into this discussion on Sweden. Yes, sir. And, uh, but I want you to explain to the audience, uh, before we go any deeper into the program, uh, your wife couldn't have a baby. Yes. And tell them a little bit about now your, your new baby. Well, uh, she is a miracle. Um, we've been praying for about 10 years now to uh, get pregnant, 
And um, Israel has the, uh, the, the best uh, fertility system in the world. So we went through the, the whole program and, um, and still nothing. But this year, God has answered our prayer and given us our little miracle. And um, so praise God. I really thank Him for that because it's so neat to see how God answers prayer in faithfulness because it takes faith in God's Word. It takes faith in what He said will be done. And if He commanded us uh, to be fruitful and multiply and, and to fill the earth, then that's what, what I stood on. I said, God, this is your commandment, your first commandment to man. As man was created, He told him, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. So um, I was faithful in hanging on to God's promises and, and, and saying, if you told me to do this, then you need to make it happen. <laughs> And uh, so, Amen. And ladies and gentlemen, once again, we're talking about Israel. We're talking about miracles. Uh, Israel is a miracle. Life out of nothing. Life out of the desert. Life out of 2,000 years of exile. Wandering the world. And now life. I believe in miracles. I see miracles. And God's given me a gift in some areas including praying for people that can't have babies. And all over the world, uh, I've laid hands on women or laid hands on men in proxy, and uh, they're immediately pregnant. I know when Doran was in my house, I said, let's just lay hands on you. And we did. And I said, now your wife will be pregnant. She was. And uh, this is a God we serve, a God of miracles that brings life that brings life. You need a miracle today. I, some of you need a miracle today. And Father God, give them that miracle right now. Give them that miracle of eternal life as they accept you as Lord and Savior. Let that woman be pregnant right now. For 16 years, she's tried. Let her be pregnant now in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Jesus. Doran, um, Sweden, your father-in-law, Lars Anderson, uh, uh, a Swedish man, yet lives much of the time in Israel. In fact, uh, you live in Israel half of the time. The other half of the time, you live in Sweden. I've ministered all through Sweden uh, three different years, and uh, that was in the early uh, 2000s. Now we're already uh, past uh, 2011, uh, into 2012 now, and um, yet I thought Sweden was backsliding uh, eight, nine, ten years ago. But what you've been telling me just grieves me so much as they're mixing Islam and Christianity and, and other things. And give a little bit of report before we change and go to the nation of Israel. Well, I'd say the most um, evident of of what's going on. This apostasy has been in one of the most powerful men of God that has been in Sweden, standing out, uh, had his life threatened because of the st strong stand that he took for the gospel. Uh, and today, their church, which is a very large church in Sweden, is going back to, uh, or actually incorporating, uh, the worship of Mary and, and, touch, and teaching on Mary and, and selling little icons of Mary. And, um, and this, of course, is, is just, this is idolatry. This is, the, the Bible is very clear about idolatry. And we are not to worship humankind. We're not to make images. And we are also uh, not, you know, uh, not to worship um, angels and, and, and other different, you know, things like this. So it's very important that God's people are clear on these issues and that we don't uh, uh, fatray about these things. I mean, this is another move that I've seen here in the United States where, where, where this man was uh, apparently leading a revival and all I saw him talk about is angels and worshiping these, these, these beings instead of listening from the report that comes from the Word of God and, and the Scriptures. And that's the same thing that we see in Islam. The reason why Islam is the way that it is is because of a report that... Uh, Muhammad received from these angels. And so you're talking about now in Sweden, uh, Protestant churches, yes. and you've named some, uh, when you talk to me, very large churches yes. 
well-known church leaders that are into Mary, into Mariology. In fact, they're, they're going back uh, into the Catholic Church's doctrines, and they're, they're messing around with not only Mariology, but Islam. Is that correct? Well, this is something that I see more in the U.S. It's called uh, Chrislam. Uh, this is a new phenomenon to me, and I'm not too deep into it, but I do know this is very powerfully growing. It's a growing movement. And you can look it up online. I think I even have a website called chrislam.com. And uh, you can just see it for yourself. This is not something that I'm uh, pulling out of the, 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 you know, trying to dig out these individuals. But these are uh, big people doing this. And what it is really is siding with the enemy of Israel. It is, and it's actually, uh, uh, it's a form of anti-Semitism because that's what it leads to. It leads to discussing how Israel is the real oppressor and, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and the Christian, Christians and Muslims need to unite. Well, where's Israel in the, in the, in the mix here? And um, so it's very scary. It's very scary for Israel. It's very scary for us as to what will this produce? What kind of fruit uh, will come out of this? Okay, so now, now let's you and I just go back and forth, you and me, and we'll forget the cameras. But uh, the problem in America, what you're seeing is, is a mixture of Islam and Christianity. Is that right? That's right. Yet what you're seeing in Sweden is uh, not only an acceptance of Islam. They were accepting Islam all through Europe, even eight, ten years ago when I was there, which greatly troubled me. But now... What, what, what I find appalling is going back into Catholicism as far as Mariology and this type of thing. Uh, is that what you're saying? That is correct. In Sweden, uh, the, the Islam part is, is not so much a, an issue as far as accepting the religion. Uh, as far as um, Christians are concerned, it's more on a nationalistic level. The, the nation has, has brought in many Muslims from all the different world, uh, parts of the world who are running for their lives. But then Islam is now taking over Sweden simply because the Swedes are not doing anything about it. They're allowing them to build and erect mosques. And now you have in the south of Sweden, Malmö, a, a, a town that is a mixing pot for all these uh, uh, immigrants that they have brought in that has a mosque that seats 70,000 congregants. That's huge in a Christian nation like Sweden. But it, 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 what you're telling me, if I'm listening to you correctly, not only onset but offset, you are talking about a huge falling away from truth. You're talking about a, uh, an apostasy. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're talking about, I believe, what the, the Bible describes as the great falling away. That's right. To where I mean, even the elect might fall away. Even the elect. That's a warning for everybody across the board. S it seems like the majority of Swedish Christian leaders don't know fundamental uh, Bible any longer as far as the doctrines of their faith, the statement of faith. That's right. I mean, they're into Mariology? Yep. This is insanity. It is insanity, and that's what we're there for, uh, I believe. God has us there right now at this time, and, um, and I'm working very strongly and, and uh, um, you know, just I will go to the ends of Sweden. It, wherever they invite me, I will be there to speak to people, to educate them about Islam, educate them about the true faith of Islam, what this is all about, and how the way to fight it is not to roll over, play dead, or to go back to the Roman Catholic Church. The, your answer is not there. Our answer is in progressing and moving forward towards Jerusalem. If you're going to go to, back to Rome, then all roads that lead to Rome lead to destruction. They lead to death. The same way when it comes to Islam. Both of these uh, 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 systems are, are, are principalities that are there to just breed uh, uh, death and destruction. And, and just, just as, as an example, out of all the wars in the world today, I think for an exception of maybe one, is, it has a Muslim influence in it. Well, Rome... Rome basically uh, attacks uh, the truth of Yahshua. That's right. Why don't and you explain that a little bit? 
Well, Rome or Islam, both of these are actually um, um, kind of like a tw twin brothers. Uh, in fact, Islam in its origin is, is the fruit of the attempts of the Catholic Church to get into the nomadic peoples of, the, uh, of, of uh, Saudi Arabia, of, of uh, uh, you know, um, Mecca and all these places where they worshipped different many gods. In fact, they were, they were pagans that worshipped other gods, like in India today. And um, so, so they tried to get in there and they found Muhammad as a, as a really uh, strong individual, a charismatic individual that they could use. So they tried to teach him and to raise him up and it actually turned on, on, on Rome. So it's kind of their, their, their product that they're really, really hateful towards. And, uh, but both of them are breeding the same thing. They're both of them are breeding death and destruction. And um, uh, because really it's all idolatry. Uh, idolatry as far as Islam being the, the moon god, that's who they worship. They worship the moon god, this Allah. It is not the same god whatsoever. They're, if you just read the Quran, which I have, you will see that it is a religion of death and destruction. It has nothing to do with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and uh, neither does the, the Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church is an idolatrous system where they worship one man who has taken the place of the Caesars as being God on the earth, and I do not bow to that system. So you talked about raise up the man to turn against Rome. What, what were you meaning by that statement? Say that again. You, you made a statement about raising up a man, Muhammad, to turn against Rome. That's right. Well, well they were trying to, to, to uh, raise up someone in the nomadic lands that were worshipping idols to worship uh, the Catholic Church, to, to you know, their creeds, their, their, their faith. And it turned on them because, as you know, uh, that's where we got the Crusaders. The Crusaders were trying to defend Europe because Muhammad reached all the way up into Spain and that's where he was turned off and that's why today modernly because you need to understand with Islam they don't forget time is on their side and they really believe that Allah is going to defend them all the way to the end which is as far as I am concerned is a lie because I stand on the Word of God that tells me that Messiah is coming back as a warrior to defend the, the, the armies of Israel and definitely not the armies of, that come from Rome and definitely not those that come from Saudi Arabia and um, so he was deflected there, and that's why today modern terrorism fight, uh, uh, um, it will, will put uh, um, um, uh, terrorist attacks specifically in Spain, specifically in these different areas where, where, where Islam was, was pushed back because they do not forget. They don't forget that we lost a war here, so we're coming back. And according to the Islamic ro uh, law, any land where Islam had taken over is considered waqf land. It belongs to them. So they're not going to relent. They're not going to give up on Europe until Europe is completely turned over to Islam. And that's what we're seeing right now in, in France, in England, in, in Sweden, in Norway, and so on and so forth. It's, it's, it is taking over, and you're also seeing it here in the United States. They're taking over whole areas, whole communities, but they're starting on with, with the small, and in small ways that you don't even feel or understand, because they're using the westernized under, uh, uh, mindset against you because they know you don't understand them so they're using your laws your principles to turn on you talk to a little bit about what's going on in Israel and and what you're doing with this project Gideon well um, uh, just uh, not long ago the Lord really put this burden on my heart uh, uh, and gave me the, the 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 concept of the of the story of, of Gideon as, 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 as showing me a way to raise funds for the soldiers. Um, because of the, the long drawn uh, uh, war with Israel uh, from 1948 until today, um, we haven't had a time of rest. We haven't been able to just, uh, uh, you know, kick back, relax, and enjoy our land. Instead, we have had to fight on a daily basis for survival. And because of this, um, Israel just does not have the means to uh, support our troops um, with all the newest gear and all the everything. Um, so what I've done is, is, is uh, actually constructed a, a, a combat vest that will um, help the reservists on the northern border who have the least amount of equipment specifically on the northern border because it's been such a quiet border. 
Um, so this is what I've done is I've, I've actually focused these, the, 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 the need to the most, those are most in need, and that's the reservists. Because they only call up on us uh, 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 when, when the wars break out or, or we do a, an annual service and not a continual uh, service, then, then um, we're, we're the ones that get the last of the line. And, and what we're using is actually gear from Vietnam era that the U.S. had given us many years ago after you pulled out, out of Vietnam. And that's what I'm trying to do is replace that and to get us the proper gear that we need that has the proper hydration system that will help us in extended times of, of battle, which we're, uh, actually this is very important to understand, we're not fighting against Lebanon. We are actually fighting against Hezbollah. Hezbollah is a terrorist organization that has hijacked um, the northern uh, border, uh, our northern neighbors on the northern border, Lebanon. They have completely hijacked them. They have taken over because up until 2006, it's been the, the, the Sunni, the Shi, and the Christian Lebanese constantly fighting each other. But now it is solely Hezbollah that has completely taken over. So you're expecting war? I'm not expecting. I know there's going to be a war coming, sadly. Um, the intelligence that we're getting is very clear that war is going to break out. And, um, and we also know this from the scriptures. We know that Gog and Magog, that's going to be in the north. So actually what, what we're doing is we're preparing God's people for the future prophetic war that's going to happen. And I'm going to be there. Most Christians don't have that opportunity, but what we do have an opportunity in is, is, is supporting the soldiers that will fight there, both financially, because I need the finances to get these vests to, to my brigade uh, uh, soldiers, but also uh, through your prayers. Prayer is the most valuable, powerful means that any Christian worldwide, any Bible-believing individual can, can use to... to um, uh, to, to bring forth the action of God on earth, to bring forth the will of God, because that's what Messiah taught us. Thy will be done, thy kingdom come, as it is in heaven, let it be done on earth. The um, situation in Israel then, as far as politically, how would you describe it? Well, politically, we're doing much better than we were previously. Um, we had, um, 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 I forgot his name right now, but our previous prime minister, um, who, who Benjamin Netanyahu beat in the last, last elections, had done Olmert. Olmert had done so much uh, uh, bad in Israel, just, just, just twisted, corrupt, and, uh, and then he put in the the defense minister who was a, a, a uh, um, he, you know, he dealt with, with as far as, his, you know, his previous uh, office was in uh, social needs. So we got a social minister who is a defense minister and no, knows nothing about defense. We got an Air Force commander who's the head of the whole IDF and has nothing, no knowledge as how the foot soldiers operate. So then what we had is this complete chaos and... Um, and Israel deserved it. I mean, we deserve the leaders that, that are, are given us. And um, so I'm just thanking God for the new leadership that we have. We have, um, you know, even though these are worldly men, they're not, they're not um, uh, you know, uh, serving as, as, as true leaders should serve. Uh, so, I mean, we're not getting the best of the best, but we're at least getting the right leaders that are fulfilling their office in a right way. They know what they're doing. We have the, the head of the, of the defense ministry is a, is, a, is a tactical genius. The head of the uh, uh, military is, just really knows his stuff. So um, that's something that I've seen as a commander in the IDF is, is the change, the paradigm shift within the IDF and how we have really, really changed our tactics and, and really pushed forward uh, what we need for this next fight with, uh, with um, Hezbollah in the north. How much does the vest cost? Each vest um, costs two hundred and eighty dollars. Wow, that's it. Well, so for the st our staff and the families of WMI, we bought a vest yesterday. That's right. That's right. That's wonderful. That's, right. that's wonderful. So we need to pray for each vest that you donate. To me, it, you also are responsible for that soldier, 
responsible for praying for the angelic protection because that's what we've seen. We've seen um, uh, testimonies of the Arab nations, and I've met, you know, pastors and, and leaders that, that, that today, I mean, they're, they're, they're Christian, but they used to be Muslim. And they would say, you know, we saw these angels, uh, you know, fighting against us. So we ran for our lives. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's, that's what Israel needs because that's why it's called Project Gideon. That's right. It's the few against the many. There's one minute left, but uh, if you'd like to be a part of this, if you'd like to support uh, this wonderful project, Project Gideon, uh, you can telephone 360-629-5248. We're going to open up a special account and uh, you'll be able to then deduct it off your taxes. But uh, isn't this wonderful to be able to help uh, in this battle. We read Zechariah. There's going to be, uh, uh, as you know, eventually Armageddon, and, and you can be involved in, in equipping uh, people in Israel to uh, take part in, in these uh, wars that are coming up. Uh, you got about 20 seconds, closing comments. Well, I just want to thank anybody who would be involved in this, and, and this is very neat because we have an opportunity to either be spectators of history or participating in history and in prophetic history that is about to unfold in front of us. May God richly bless you. Shalom. The Word of God is serious. Can you say amen? You don't play with it? You don't mock it? You don't reject it. You don't manipulate it. You obey it. Do you enjoy my warning television program? If you do, I need your help. Judgment is escalating. The cup of iniquity is becoming full for the United States of America. The science of judgment is sweeping the world. Every nation is being judged. The New World Order, Islam and a 12th Imam, the Mahdi, World War III, the mark of the beast, the plagues of God, over two billion people dying, Armageddon, and the return of Jesus Christ. Please, won't you help me sound the alarm? Partner with me. Even a one-time gift would help. Telephone now, 360-629-5248. That's 360-629-5248. 360-629-5248. Thank you and shalom.